Our scripture read, reading this morning is from the book of Luke, chapter 5, verses 1 to 11, and this is the calling of the first disciples. One day, as Jesus was standing by the lake of Genserah, with the people crowding around him and listening to the word of God, he saw at the river's water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything, but because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knee and said, Go away from me, Lord, I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid, from now on you will catch men. So they pulled their boats up on shore, left everything, and followed him. Uh, begin our sermon this morning. I will uh, simply remind you guys if you and tell you if you didn't know because we haven't said anything yet. Um, after services, there is a giant cake to celebrate the uh, uh, people that were confirmed today. So please go have a piece of cake and then get ready for soup after the cake. There you go. So with so much going on in our service today, I will warn you that the sermon will be a bit shorter today than usual. Uh, and I know that must cause pain for all of you to hear that. Uh, but I would gladly write and give a short sermon each week if we were able to celebrate the confirmation of new members in its place. Amen. So this morning, as we look at our scripture, we continue in our series, uh, the early part of Jesus's ministry, and where we find him today is uh, beginning to call his disciples to be with him. Jesus finds a bunch, of, a bunch of fishermen standing around the edge of the lake, getting ready to call it a, a day after struggling to catch almost nothing that night. And you may have noticed that in the scripture that they said we worked hard all night. And I say night because that is when they would be fishing um, in this area. So those of us that enjoy fishing, we know that it can be frustrating uh, whenever we go out and spend the entire day and we don't catch anything. So imagine you've been out fishing all day long and you haven't caught anything. And we call that getting skunked in our family because it stinks. But there's a difference here, though, between how we would fish and how they would fish. And I don't just mean the using of nets versus the using of poles. On a day when we go fishing and we don't catch anything, we can at least fall back on the idea that, hey, it was a nice day spent outside. Hopefully we had taken some time while we were out there to commune with God uh, so that it doesn't feel like a complete waste. But these men were relying on catching fish for their livelihood. So I want to imagine that you spent a day at work working very hard, putting in lots of effort, but at the end of the day, you feel as though you've accomplished absolutely nothing. Uh, for me, I thought of a time when I spent about two weeks working on a project uh, for my prior job and working very hard on it uh, and just about to complete it, uh, only to, to meet with the person I was creating this uh, project for and them to tell me, oh, hey, we don't need that anymore. We decided to go in a different, uh, different way. Um, it was very frustrating, right? I felt like I had wasted so much time. And Jesus finds the fishermen and he says, hey, take me out on a boat so that I can talk to the people. And then he says, take me out to the deep and we're going to catch some fish. 
Simon, who would later become Peter, tells Jesus that, hey, we've been out there all night. We haven't caught anything. There's no point of going out. Let us just call it a day. But Jesus insists, and Simon does take him out further. And when he tells them to throw the nets, they throw their nets out. And lo and behold, after a night of catching nothing, there are so many fish in the nets that it's difficult for them to pull their nets into the boats. In some translations, it says that the boats began to sink because of the amount of fish. Now, Simon very quickly realizes that this is a miracle. You see, he fishes here nearly every night as his father did and as his father did before him. He knows when you're going to catch fish and he knows when you're not going to catch fish. And knowing that they've worked hard all night and caught nothing and now there's this huge bounty, there can only be one explanation. And it's that Jesus has given them a miracle of all these fish. And Simon's reaction to catching all these fish is not to pray or to fall down and simply worship Jesus and to say, thank you for the bounty, Lord. No, Simon realizes as well that when he sees this miracle, he is in the presence of someone much greater than he is. And he realizes what Jesus is going to want from him. And he tells Jesus, no, no, please go away from me. I am a sinful man. I am not worthy to be with you in this moment. And Jesus tells him not to be afraid and that he will make him a fisher of men instead of just a fisherman. Now, in the last week's sermon, we talked about God having a calling upon our lives. And we talked about how when that calling comes into our lives, sometimes we face negative things from the people around us when we tell them what God is calling us to do. And I left the end of that sermon with a reminder that, yes, we do all have a calling from God. It's not just a pastor. It's not just a bishop or a DS that has a calling. It's a calling that's given to all of us. And when Simon Peter realizes that Jesus is going to give him a calling, his initial reaction is one that I think we can all identify with very easily. No, no, not me, Lord. I am a sinful man. Now, I've often said how Peter is my favorite of the disciples because he's so human. We see ourselves in him, or at least I see myself in him. I see that he wants to do the right thing, but he is afraid. I see that he wants to follow Jesus, but at the same time, he's holding on to something else just a little bit so that he stays grounded. So his response of, no, Jesus, please go away. I'm a sinful man, makes sense. But I wonder how many of us have used that excuse when Jesus has called us. How many of us have said just that when Jesus puts something onto our heart that he wants us to be doing? I wonder how many of us looked at our calling, looked at Jesus and said, not me. I appreciate what you're trying to say, Lord, but I'm just not good enough. I am too sinful. You know, for a long time, for me, that is how I approached my calling to ministry. No, God, not me. I am too sinful. No, God, not me. I am not good enough. No, God, please pick somebody else. I'll do what I can to support them, but I can't be the one that you're calling to ministry. I will never live up to your expectations. See, I think it's a very human feeling for us to have. But the truth is this. When we say, no, God, we're not good enough. No, God, I'm a sinful man. Please go away from me. No, God, I cannot follow this calling. I will never be good enough for you. Well, the truth is, we're right. You see, the truth is, we will never be good enough for him. We could never hope to be good enough for God on our own. But just like Jesus tells Simon, we don't have to do it on our own. Jesus doesn't say, I will send you out on your own, all alone to be a fisher of men. No, he says, I will make you a fisher of men if you follow me. See, when we accept that calling from God, we never have to do it on our own again. We can be made worthy, but we cannot do that alone. That is where Jesus and the grace of God come into our lives. You see, with Jesus, we can be made into good enough. 
when Jesus, with Jesus, we can be made whole again, and with Jesus, we can be made into something that God can use for his purpose. So in our sermon together last week, I told you that you've all been called, but today I want you to know that just like Simon, you have also been sent. Know that you're not alone as you're going. Know that you're, going to achieve, you're not going to achieve this on your own, and know that you're not going to face anything in this world on your own. Because Jesus will be there with you. He has called you to his side. Now go and be fishers of men. Amen. Your challenge this week is to trust Jesus and cast your nets.